It is a nice and rainy day. I love the rain, so you won't hear me complain about the rain. Usually I light a candle and kick my feet up and take a nap. Um, but um, these days are always fun for me. Either way, we weren't deterred. Thank you, Lord. Yep. That's a good sign, right? All right. Um, service, uh, we are still having uh, Wednesday service at 7 o'clock. Um, we'll be having Wednesday service uh, other than the week of Christmas and the week after, excuse me. So service this Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Um, there is child care, and we do have children's ministry going on that night as well. So just know that it, if you are um, wanting to go deeper or at least just show up to be strengthened some. Uh, Wednesdays is great for that. Uh, Richard and then other speakers and teachers on Wednesday night have been kind of all in the same vein and it's been a, a good night of encouragement and uh, sharpening. So Wednesday service at 7 here in the sanctuary. Child, child care is available and we do have ministry on Wednesday night for the children. Also, um, there still is a, a, some space to help for Toy Fest. And if any of you guys are unaware of Toy Fest, um, it is a big event we're doing out in Havana just to bless that community and share the gospel and be the hands and feet of Christ in that community. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, Dustin and Amy Wells have been heading that up. It is this Saturday the 16th, or Saturday the 16th, excuse me. Um, and so more details uh, are going out in the email, but there's a sign up in the back. Yes, ma'am. Looking for bakers. All right, so men, get your aprons on. Bring the cookies to the church Friday evening between five and six. All right, awesome. So. Individually wrapped. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Everybody got that? Great. We're also starting a School of Kingdom ministry um, at the end of January. And there is a sign up in the back as well. Everything's out in the foyer around the corner, right where the, the tithe and offering box is. Um, it's right over there to that door to the right if you were to walk straight out of the sanctuary. And um, well, that's where all the sign ups are, a lot of informationals are. Um, it is a, it will be a night on, it'll be Thursday nights, um, and it is strictly to, um, it's not a beginner's class. It's something to, to help you go deeper and walk in the spirit and understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that can sometimes be a little stigmatized, but I don't know about you guys. I always thought when people would tell me God has done speaking, that they were not just lying to me. They were fooled because God is speaking now, and he's moving now. So the lie that all we need is scripture, no, that's not the case. Jesus said, these scriptures testify of me. So there's plenty of people carrying around Bibles that do not know God, and they do not know his voice. Just, yep. We'll uh, set that one straight. There's also a foundational class starting up. Same thing. Long, long, uh, long announcement this morning. Just bear with me. I promise it's going to get good. Um, the foundational class is so that others understand anyone that needs to either sharpen up just biblical foundation, their biblical foundation, um, doctrinal foundation, I should say, just the basics, the elementary school of scripture. And I go through it I would say every two years, I go through and I, I freshen up on all of my foundational biblical doctrine. What I believe, what, why scripture is important. I don't hear what I just said and not think I don't value the power and the validity of scripture. I very much do. I just believe that God has every intention of speaking to me, and he does, and allowing me to experience the fullness of the kingdom of God on this earth. Because Jesus said what? As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven, God. 
on this earth, Lord, in my home, in my family, in my marriage, in my children, in my community. Right. Gifts of the Spirit. God has not taken those back, and the Holy Spirit is not armless. We didn't get a half of the Holy Spirit, uh, one leg and one arm. He is speaking. He is moving, even here and now. All right. Also, the LP sign has been painted. I don't know where Miss Debbie, Debbie Jean's at. Hey, Miss Debbie. Red coat. Thank you so much. It looks great. Elizabeth and I drove up and we were like, our sign is terrible. And then you painted it. It's great. Awesome. Awesome. Um, thank you. Um, many were blessed also yesterday by the LifePoint carolers. And so we went around the community before it rained us out. And uh, we sang into people's hearts. And so that was good. All right. So most of the time I wake up on Sundays and I, I just ask God a simple question. What are you saying? What do you, want to, what do you want to talk about? What are you saying right now? And we all know about turning on the radio and hearing something and, you know, a song speaking to you. And that's what happened this morning and it just hit me. And the name of the song was, You Can't Wash Off the Blood. We can't wash off the blood of Christ. We are covered by the blood, not needing to plead it over ourselves anymore. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb. It has power. It's, it's, you cannot erase it. You cannot remove it. The blood has been applied to the doorpost of our lives, us. This body is, our, is the doorpost of our soul. Right? dwelling place we are God's dwelling place and he has painted us covered us in his blood lastly before we dive into it Romans 8 if you brought your Bibles you can flip there if not just trust God Now, if you're like me, you go through times and seasons where you will try to define yourself or you'll let your weaknesses, you'll let moments where you struggle tell you who you are. And I remember telling the Lord, I, I just said, I do not, I, I'm not worth it right now. There's no way. And he roars like a lion. And I heard him loud and clear. And he says, that's not what I say about you. That's not what I say about you. And so in a time where we're allowing everybody else and anything else to try to define us, we've got to fight those things out of our heart because the only one that tells us who we are is our Heavenly Father. He's the only one that knows the end from the beginning, the in and the out. It's not what's going on outwardly. It's in our inner man. He calls that person forth. He knows that individual. Like he told Samuel, he said, I don't see as man sees. I look at the heart. We need to know who we are. And the only way to do that is to know our Father. But this is it. Know in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, we love you this morning. You are faithful and kind. You are good. You never leave us. You're here. We don't have to ask you to show up. You've told us you would never leave us. So thank you for being here. Make yourself known now more than ever, God. We need you. We are desperate for you. Thank you. Receive this offering of praise. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys are welcome to 
to stand and worship with us.
We bless you, Lord. Your name is glorified. You are exalted in our presence, Lord. Almighty God, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. Amen. Good morning. Got to get centered. <clears throat> Great to see everybody this morning. Uh, thanks for coming out, even though it's raining. Rain is a good thing. And uh, you do get wet. You can get wet. Give our children a moment to uh, get wet because that's what they're going to do. <clears throat> Thank you, Miss Shiloh, for doing signing. I don't know if she heard me, but she comes up to, she knows sign language, so she is, her way of worshiping is doing sign language, which maybe nobody here speaks that, but somebody online may. So I'm proud of her doing that. That's very... First of all, it's brave <laughs> to get up in front of people, and she has such a sweet spirit that uh, the anointing of God is just on her when she does it, so I appreciate that very much. Is that donut for me? <laughs> um, welcome to Life Point Church this morning. I'm glad everybody's here. Uh, it's always a good time to get together. I do have uh, an announcement to make that's not a happy announcement. We, this week, lost one of our dear brothers, um, Eileen's husband, Alex uh, Waller. Uh, many know him by Bucky, and I only know him by Alex. So every, every time someone would say Bucky, I, I have no idea what they're talking about. But uh, we will miss him dearly. Um, he went... Uh, was it Monday? And passed in his sleep, which is, was a good thing for that to happen, but we still miss him. There's still a vacancy. And uh, the celebration service for his life is tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Northwoods, uh, which I think you can look that up for directions to get there, but start at 2 p.m. And we're going to celebrate him. Amen. A lot of families in town right now, we welcome them. Uh, they actually came, I think a lot of them came for a wedding that happened. Um, Eileen, not the, uh, Gloria and Bruce's, one of their children got married yesterday. And so a lot going on, a lot going on all at one time. But we welcome the family and we're thankful you're here this morning. And, and uh, we pray for you guys and bless you because, you know, you got mixed feelings with all that happening. Uh, and it's part of life. It's the hard part of life, but it's still part of life. And uh, I still, as many years as I've got into this, I haven't figured out how to navigate that. Don't know the right words. And so I figured out a long time ago, the right words, there aren't any. So you just, we just love each other and we stay in family and we stay connected. And so um, I want to let you know about that. Uh, it's a big deal, and uh, we want to stand with the family. Love you guys. Um, <clears throat> I want to do something different. I want everybody to stand. Please. <laughs> Say please. <laughs> I uh, would like to read Isaiah 53 out loud. And uh, you don't have to read it with me. You can just listen, but I want to read it out loud. And uh, I'm going to be speaking on the Word of God again today, but I just felt in my spirit to read His Word out loud, and the standing part is in honor of the Word of God. <clears throat> Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? 
He grew, up a, he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ your son. There is no way we can repay. We don't even begin to try. The only thing we can do is surrender our hearts. And we do that, Lord, with full abandonment. We just surrender ourselves before you and say, be our God, be our Savior, be our life, be our redemption, be our righteousness, And Lord, we love you and we praise you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I've been speaking the last probably month or so, maybe longer, on the importance of the Word of God, and I won't rehash everything I've spoken. Uh, Last week, I touched on strongly on the part where Jesus talks about every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God uh, is, is what we live by, and it is our meat, it's our provision, it's our life. And I actually look at the Word of God as being that portion for my life. Uh, The Word of God is not just a book. It's not just written words. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Men were moved by the Holy Spirit to write what they wrote, and we have it in our hands. And I don't have to go into all the history of it, but the Bible's probably one of the oldest books, if not the oldest book, that's still around and has never been able to be erased from history. Uh, Even throughout history, there's times that there have been even kingdoms, uh, nations that have tried to eradicate the word of God, and they were not able to accomplish it. Uh, It actually got twisted around to where the word of God became more powerful. And I think the Word of God is something that we have to appreciate and look at with a lot more than a Bible on a shelf that collects dust. 
And um, so I've been talking about the Word of God and, and bringing out some things in the Word of God that speaks to us. And the Word of God, when it's given life by the Holy Spirit, uh, because there is, um, you know, we can take the Bible, and one of the things that I said last week many times, we can take the Word of God and we can condemn people and condemn ourselves with the very Word of God because we take it out of context or because we take it in the wrong light and we're not listening to the whole counsel of God as, as we do that, which is something that I think sometimes it's good to just read the entire Bible instead of picking out verses here and there. And, you know, we do that a lot. We memorize verses and pick them out. But it's good to read the entire context because sometimes putting it all in context helps us understand what God is saying and understand more fully the counsel of God uh, that we need to hear rather than picking apart the Bible and letting it say what we want it to say, which becomes a big problem. Many times we take the word of God and we try to make it say what we want. And you can find ways to do that. You can find scriptures to do that. And it can just, it can be the totally wrong thing. And we wonder why James, the author James, in and, and his epistle, he writes something. He says, you ask and you ask amiss. And the reason you don't receive is because you're asking the wrong ask. And many times the wrong ask is because we're asking according to our own desires and not according to God's counsel not according to what God is actually saying uh, for our lives. And so it's important to realize the Word of God has power, and I want to talk about the power of the Word of God more than anything today. But I want, as a backdrop, for you to understand that as we speak about the power of the Word of God, it's not just a declaring to get. It's not a name it and claim it type gospel. Uh, which for a long time there was actually doctrines going around as they you just name it you just take the word of God and you just proclaim something and it's going to happen and people got very discouraged and I, if I ask for a raise of hands which I'm not I would say many people even in the room have been discouraged over the years because you've used the word of God and you said things and everything that we've heard is well you just speak the word of God and you stand on the word of God and it'll come to pass and we don't see some of those things happening because I think we're asking amiss. I think we're asking out of context to what God is actually trying to do. And uh, there is power in the Word of God. There is, especially when God breathes on the Word. And without getting too deep into this part of it, uh, <clears throat> there is, I believe, a very important part that we need to take in consideration with the Word of God, and that is a relationship with God. And the closer we get to God, the better we understand His Word, and the clearer we hear Him speaking the Word that brings life to us in the present moment. And I think that's a critical part of Christianity that sometimes gets missed, and, and we just try to bring all these things and put them all in our bag of tricks for Christianity. And so many things don't work the way we think we're, they're supposed to work, the way people preach it to us and the way we've heard it because we're not putting it in the right place. We're not, we're not relying on the Spirit of God to breathe on it, for God himself to breathe on his word. Uh, and, and we wonder, why, why is this stuff not happening? There is a difference, and without going too deep into it, there is a difference in reading the Word of God and God breathing on His Word and reading that Word. It's like, just to simplify it, maybe it's oversimplified, but we can be reading the Bible, and there's times that I'm reading the Bible and I'm just going through and it's just, just me and the Word of God, just reading. And all of a sudden, on that page, one part of what I'm reading will be highlighted in me. I can just sense there's something on that that's not the same as the rest of what I'm reading. And a lot of times what's happening is the Spirit of God is breathing on that part, that line, that truth, and breathing it into my life for the present circumstance that I am living in. How many times have we read the Word of God? I, I've gone through and and, and, and I've preached messages on things 
that I never knew were in the Word of God until after I went through a period in life where that Word came alive to me like at no other time in my life. I can give many examples. God's provision. Uh, I've learned because of what the Word of God says and because of being in circumstances where God had to breathe on His Word for me to move forward, I've learned that God provides, period. Not, Not everybody knows that. We might say it, but we're not convinced of it. I am convinced of it because God breathed on that Word, or you could say God breathed on His name that says, I am the God that provides. And I can remember going through times that, uh, I don't know if anybody else has gone through times when, I don't even know if we had a checking account. We didn't have anything. Anybody bear witness to that? Well, try doing that on the mission field. And I can remember going through times that I would just cry out to God and say, God, do you not remember me? Have you not thought about me? Have you not considered your son, Richard? (laughs) And I can remember going through periods of time where I would find in the Word of God, God would speak and breathe on His Word to me, and I would be able to stand upon that Word because that Word had power for my life. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the power that goes with the Word of God. And, and, and let me say this right up front. God's Word without power is not God's Word. I'll repeat that because I see some blank stares and trying to process. God, God's Word, what God says, void of power, is not the Word of God. The Word of God is always partnering with or included with power. God's Word is powerful. And at some point, we've got to come to a place where we actually believe that there's power with the Word of God, not just the Word of God being a philosophy or being a way that we can think. It's not just having a good character. It's not just doing the right thing. There is power that accompanies the Word of God. All right, so um, let me just read uh, Mark 16, of course, says this. And uh, Mark 16, verse 19 says, After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. The Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. And throughout the word of God, this is not the only place that this is mentioned. I'm going to go into some other scriptures. But throughout the word of God, we see that the word is accompanied by power. I'm not going to get a lot of response from that, but. (laughs) Acts chapter 19 says this. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear. They heard the message of Jesus Christ, okay? They heard the message of salvation. They heard the word of God. And in this city, Ephesus, was not a godly city. It was an ungodly city uh, filled with all kinds of witchcraft. And it says they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Verse 18, many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. I do not know how much a drachma is worth. But I do know that it's a lot of money. And I believe this number is in the hundreds of thousands. 
dollars. Verse 20 says this, In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. The word of the Lord spread widely. I think it's interesting throughout the book of Acts, and I don't have the, the, all the scriptures written down, but throughout the book of Acts, many times it talks about not the gospel being spread, but the word being spread. And I just think it's an interesting phraseology that, that's in the book of Acts, that it says, and the word of God grew. The word of God had power. And over and over again, we see that throughout the book of Acts uh, as they went around preaching the Word of God. Um, <clears throat> let me take you to another story. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And I want to start in verse 8. It talks about the, the story about the centurion. A centurion is not necessarily Jewish, probably not Jewish. And uh, he was a soldier. And it's funny how sometimes we can be in church our whole lives and not know God. We can, we can be around all this stuff and, and not believe in God the way we should believe in him and we get crusty I've said this over the years I've said this recently as well I prefer in my own life to clean the whiteboard of all the junk that I've learned so that I can relearn what God wants me to learn. Because we, we are so blocked by things we've been taught even from when we were children. By religious concepts and religious ways and traditions that don't have anything to do with God. And yet those things are interfering with us moving forward and believing who he really is for our lives. Does that make sense? So here's a centurion. I would say, I know he's not a Jewish man, and he's working in a Jewish area, Jewish city. And he comes along and he's heard some things about Jesus Christ. I love when you don't know anything, when, you're, when your slate is clean and you know nothing about God and you hear about God for the first time, that, that's going to be a lasting impression on your life. I, I'm, I'm so uh, saddened so many times that the first message people hear from, about God is to change their behavior. I know a lot are thinking, but shouldn't people change their behavior? You can't change anybody's behavior until the heart changes. If there's not a change of heart, forget about the behavior. The behavior has no meaning at all. Because I know Christians that act worth, worse than anybody else. And they just hide it because they get away with it and they go to confession or go to whatever their moment is before the Lord and say, God, forgive me and move on and do the same thing over and over again. Hello. But it's so cool when people hear about God for the first time and it's, they've got this clean slate and you tell them things that the Word of God says and they have no reason not to believe it because they haven't learned something else. I had someone ask me several years back, uh, because I make these trips into other nations, and many times I'm seeing miracles and seeing healings, and they said to me, they said, why don't you see more here? And my answer pretty much is what I'm saying today. My answer is, because we've been told so long that it doesn't happen, we don't believe anymore. We've conformed 
into a way of religion in our nation. And we, when we talk about revival and having a revival and praying for revival, we need to pray for revival to erase everything we've learned so we can learn what God actually says. And let the Spirit of God breathe on His Word as if it was the first time we've heard it. That's one of the reasons I love taking uh, the Bible that I use for my, my time before the Lord, to just spend with the Lord. I don't use that Bible for sermon prep. I don't use it for uh, making up a, word, a study. I use it only for reading and spending time in the presence of God. And, <clears throat> and I say this over and over again, and you, can, you have your own beliefs. This is my belief. This is my conviction. I take the Word of God literal when it says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you can read all of it down through verse 14. It all agrees, and verse 14 finishes that thought and says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I believe God's Word still, still wants to become flesh and dwell in us. And so when I spend time with the Bible, when I spend time with the Word of God, I'm not spending time with a book. I'm spending time with Jesus. And some would say, well, but, but that's different. How is it different if the Word of God says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. How is it different if I'm spending time with the Word of God, it was breathed by God, it was spoken by God, how is it different than spending time with Jesus if I'm spending time with the Word? I don't believe there is a difference. I believe they're one and the same. I believe I'm in the presence of Jesus when I'm reading His Word. I had a, a minister friend fight me over that because I said that out loud somewhere else. And I get in trouble all the time. Uh, and that's okay. That's par for the course. I don't mind getting in trouble because I don't want to listen to the religious thought on what they think the Word of God says. I want to actually look at what the Word of God says. And they, they fought me on it. They said, the Bible is just a book. And I looked at them and I said, for you it might be, but it's not for me. You live your Christianity and get out of my life. Because I ain't going there. I, can I say I've been so spoiled by the supernatural God of the Bible that I can't go back to believing in a God that just doesn't do anything? Amen. All right, so we have a centurion. And this centurion says, he says this to Jesus. Just say the word, because I don't deserve that you come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed, for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Just think about that statement for a second. I've not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Jesus said that about one other person. It was a woman that was begging for her daughter to be healed. And he said, I've not seen such great faith in all of Israel. Both cases, both times that Jesus called them people of great faith, they were not Jewish. Solely because, and I'm comparing the Jewish people to the church today, solely because they got so familiar with God, they stopped believing His Word. When we get super familiar with God, we start treating Him like the carpenter. We start treating Him like the son of Joseph. We start treating him like this guy that 
whatever he's doing. We don't realize that it is the Son of God, the divine Son of God. And I think we need to reconnect. And as we start looking at the Word of God, realize, man, if God would just speak a word, um, <clears throat> I always am looking for, God, what are you saying? I want to speak His words, not my words. And I'm always looking for God to breathe on what He wants to say right now. What's going on right now? What is God saying on the earth? What is God speaking to His children? What is God speaking to us as individuals in our situations? This man recognized authority. And I can take you through the Word of God. And many times when Jesus would begin to speak, they would say about Jesus, with what authority he speaks. They weren't just hearing words from Jesus. They were hearing authority in his words. It wasn't because he raised his voice. It was because he is the word of God. With what authority? This man knew that Jesus was a man under authority, which is another subject that I won't get into, but it's very important that we understand what it is to be under authority, not under dictatorship, but under authority. Not under control and manipulation, but under authority. There is a healthy authority, first of all, being Jesus Christ for our lives. And God does have healthy authority in the earth. But let's not stay under the wrong authority. This man recognized Jesus as being one that had authority because he was under authority from the Father in heaven. Jesus said, but it's more than saying, he practiced never doing anything he did not see or hear from his Father in heaven. Man, can we actually learn to live life that way? You say, well, that's the Son of God. Well, he's calling us to live that way. We are called, if we're following Jesus Christ, we are called to live not our own life, but to live the life that he has through us. So, He said, what great authority this man has. You don't have to do anything. Just speak the word because the word has authority that's coming out of Jesus' mouth. The word that has authority also can be said to have power. God's word has authority and authority has power. I think it's a beautiful picture as we speak to things. I can't tell you how many times, uh, for example, I've spoken to demons. You might say, are we supposed to speak to demons? Well, you don't want to entertain them. You don't want to have conversations. But there are many times that I've told demons to get lost. I've told them to get out. I've told them to stop. I've told them a number of things. And they've had to obey what I say Because I'm speaking God's word with authority. Does that make sense? God's word accompanies authority. I can remember uh, dealing with a person. We dealt with a lot of people that would come and have all kinds of situations. And uh, this one lady came to us and she she was talking to me, asking for counseling, what to do. And she had there were just manifestations of demons in her house. I mean, things floating, things moving, things things were happening that was not good. And her and her family, they were not able to sleep at all, and all this stuff was going on. And so I gave her the remedy. I said, go and rebuke those demons in the name of Jesus Christ, and they've got to go. Well, she did that. She went and did all that and came back, and she said, nothing's changed. And so I finally asked her, I said, Do you know Jesus Christ? 
And I said, would you tell me why you're saved? Tell me how you know you're saved. And her explanation for being saved was that she saw a light. And that's why she, she's saved. So I led her in prayer to receive Jesus Christ as her Savior. And from that day on, she had authority in her house. And it was that much of a change from one day to the next. Demons will not respect an authority other than Jesus Christ. They won't. In our personal lives and in many other areas. So this man, Jesus said to him, go, in verse 13, said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. Um, <clears throat> Luke 4, verse 36 says this. All the people were amazed and said to each other, what words these are, with authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits, and they come out. With authority and power, he gives orders, and the impure spirits come out. Matthew eight sixteen, just a little bit further than where we were reading in that story. It says, when evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. With a word. I don't play with demons. And I don't even labor over sickness. I pray and I believe, number one, I mean, I want God to heal everybody. How many want to see that? I don't understand. I can't sit up here and tell you why some are healed, some are not. I can't figure all that out. I can remember for years, uh, it was very common in... Christian circles to condemn people and say, well, they just didn't have enough faith. That's why they didn't get healed. I believe that's a lie of the devil. That, I mean, that just heaps condemnation. When you hear that, that just puts condemnation on you. And it's just like, wow, I, 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 I guess I don't have faith. I'm just a bad person. That's, that's not God. That's a lie. Does everybody hear that? That is a lie. Uh, <clears throat> I don't understand why some get healed miraculously. And, you know, we sit there and talk about it, and it's like this is the way it's supposed to be for everybody. I believe God wants every person healed. I believe there's provision in the cross for healing to take place in our bodies. And I believe for that, right? Uh, I don't see it all the time. And I don't have answers. I, I, I can sit here and honestly say I don't have the answers to the why it doesn't always happen. The one thing that gives me, if you will, some comfort and some understanding is out of Hebrews chapter 2, where it says, all things have been put under our feet, and yet we don't see everything under our feet. So here's where my comfort comes from. I am not God, neither are you. And there's some parts of God I just don't understand, and it's going to take an eternity to know it. In the meantime, I take what God says and what his word says, and I declare his word without fighting, without struggling. I just declare his word and stand upon his word, believing that God will do his will. So when I pray for sick people, I'm not begging God. When I pray for sick people, I'm actually declaring healing on their bodies because by his stripes we were healed. I don't know what to do after that moment. Except stand upon his word. Because his word has power. Amen. So Jesus did it. I mean he had 100%. 100% victory. One time he did pray for someone. Had to pray for him twice. That's the son of God. I think he did that to just show us, don't give up. Don't give up. Sometimes you've got to press through. Sometimes you've got to go a little further. 
Sometimes it does take uh, fasting. It does take prayer. It does take time to just go after the Lord and, and not just give up on it. Um, we, we, we continue to believe. Amen? Um, let me take you to another story in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 43 says, After the two days he left Galilee, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replies, go, your son will live. And this is what it says about this man. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized, then the father realized, then the father realized See, we always want to have it all figured out. Don't try to figure it all out. Just believe God's word. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. I love the moments that God does things and we are actually in shock because he did it. I can't tell you how many times in life I've just stood upon the word of God and it happened. And I'm looking like, man, I don't even know if I had faith or I didn't know it was going to happen. I was just doing what I was told to do but from the word of God, just standing there and doing it. And God did something, and I'm, I'm as shocked as whatever happened, right? I'm, I'm shocked by it. And it's like, you know, praying for people, and you see a miracle take place, and it's like, wow, that actually worked. Has that ever happened to you? That actually worked. So then you want to try it again, right? You want to try it again and again and again and again, because it actually worked. Listen, I don't know who I was talking to recently, but they were telling me that they, they had a lot of doubt about stuff. I said, just let your doubt roll around in your head. Don't let it out. All of us are fighting with a certain amount of doubt. And what you haven't seen, it's hard to believe. So we use faith for the unseen, correct? And we're fighting with our faith to believe God and believe his word. So many times what I do is I take the word of God because I know God's word in itself. In itself, the word is a seed. And the seed always has everything it needs to fulfill what it is. In itself, the word of God has power to accomplish what it says. I can go on and on. God's word will never return to him void. It will accomplish all that he sends it to do. It doesn't matter how many times we think that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work. God's word will not return to him void. It will accomplish because God's word is like a seed and it will multiply and produce what's contained within it. And it has power to fulfill that. 
So many times in life, I'll just stand upon the Word of God and just believe the Word of God, believe for His provision, believe for His redemption, believe for His healing. But I can tell you the first time, you know, you hear stories, you hear testimonies. Testimonies are great. There's nothing like experiencing it for yourself. Testimonies do build our faith to take chances, to step out a little further. But there's nothing like when it happens to you. Then it becomes, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. And I can't tell you how many times in life I've come to that realization and without rehashing a lot of things, there's a lot that happens in the Word of God as we start believing and we walk through life and we come to those moments where the Word of God actually is fulfilled in our presence, in our eyes, in our, in our moment. We, our faith goes to a whole different level. So we are fighting a faith fight. Fight the good fight of faith. We are fighting to stand upon the Word of God no matter what the world says around us. We're fighting even though the culture tells us such and such. We're fighting even though circumstances tell us this or tell us that. We're fighting even though we look at the gas and the gas goes up or goes down. We're fighting the good fight of faith. Are you there? I'll tell you, if you listen to news long enough, you will be messed up. We need to listen to the good news. We need to listen to what God is saying, the good news, and by faith, stand upon his word, believe his word until we see it come to pass. Don't give up on God. Do not give up on his word. God's word has power. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for your people right now. I pray for all of us, Lord, that you will shower us with living words. Lord, that you would speak your word to each person. You would speak to us and let your word come alive in our spirits. Lord, let us hear a word breathed by you today for our life. Lord, we look to you and we trust you that your word is alive It's like a two-edged sword. Your word does divide. Your word does have power. And we stand upon that word, Lord, as we speak it over our things. We speak it over our families. We speak it, Lord, over our circumstances. We speak it in every area of our life. Lord, we are trusting and believing your word to be more true than the news. And in Jesus' name, we thank you right now that you pour out of your Holy Spirit to breathe on us and to fill us, Lord, with the breath of life and breathe your word into our spirits in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If I could have the prayer team come up to pray as we're, as we're dismissed as, as usual. Uh, there, the team is up here to meet with anybody that would like prayer for physical healing, spiritual healing. You just need someone to agree with you, uh, pray with you, just speak with you for a moment. They're up here to receive you, and uh, the rest of us will be dismissed. God bless you. Enjoy the rain. Don't get soaked. And greet somebody before you get away. I know uh, there's a lot of family here from uh, Bruce and... Gloria and Eileen, uh, they have a lot of family around. Make them feel welcome, and uh, they might want to run away, but (laughs) go ahead and meet them. I know they've got kids from Bulgaria and from England. They came a long ways, and uh, they're working overseas. And so God bless you. Have a great afternoon, and enjoy. Enjoy.